Welcome BTGers to the Nürburgring Nordschleifer. Uh, we've got an important question for you today. Uh, that question is, is the Toyota Supra still a Toyota? And is the four cylinder actually any good compared to the six cylinder? So we're gonna find out more about that. And we're gonna do that on the track. So let's just go to the track. So this is a four cylinder Supra, 268 horsepower. We've got the performance pack, which means it's 268 horsepower, plus it's got the big brakes, plus it's got the six cylinder rear differential and axle, and basically the things like full fat. As, as full fat as you can get a four cylinder Supra to be. Smells like a BMW, man. Smells like a BMW. What would you like to know? Let's pop it, first of all, into manual. Let's hit the sport button. Yep, we're in sport. It's got a sport thing there. All right, so, B48 engine. 268 horsepower from a two liter four cylinder turbo. I mean, the whole car's BMW. When you lift the hood and you look underneath, right? Every badge that you see is BMW. Engine, gearbox, drivetrain, cooling systems. It's all got little BMW part numbers on it. So, 335 up ahead. Suspect he's on semi-slicks. We are, of course, in a totally standard car. Borrowed from my good friends at, I don't know, Gent 4 Ting or something? Don't know, can't say because then that takes this video into the realm of commercialization. And I just want to tell you viewers about a totally standard two liter four cylinder Supra. Oh, I've just realized I've got all the nannies on. Okay, around the outside. And as soon as we've got this little moment to relax, I can look for the buttons. There's the button. That was not the right button, that was the safety button. Okay, let me feel up a little bit. Ah, there we go, middle indentation, hold that. VSC off, there we go. That's better. A Little bit of a dry line creeping in from the outside here. Ah, there we go, now we've got a little bit of power oversteer. So the diff, this has a variable locking differential, controlled much the same as the M2. In fact, in the same housing as the basic M2, I believe. Funny that. So many things shared between this car and an M2. But little four cylinder, I'm sitting basically on the rear axle. I've got that beautiful Z4 feeling. Definite sports car, long bonnet, axle right behind my butt cheeks. It's a cool feeling sports car. I'd hazard to say it's the best sports BMW I've driven this year. Sorry, Toyota. <laughs> Look at this, now we're catching up with the Yaris GR. Just five years ago, you couldn't imagine that a track would be full of Toyotas. And yet here we are, Gazoo Racing, putting the racing back into Toyota. Nice. If you're wondering what the hell these lines are, by the way, then I suggest that you just go watch one of my wet line videos. I'm not gonna to talk too much about the wet line on this. So the engine is super torquey. It's not got much top end fizz, it has to be said. I feel like if it had the same amount of boost at the top end as it clearly does in the mid range, this thing would explode and do 300 kilometers an hour and it would also be doing about 300 horsepower, I suspect. Not allowed to do any skids. So that's gonna be, get corrected. God damn it, I'm trying not to. It's really tricky. It's really tricky to go to the edge in this car. If you just wanna stay a little bit underneath the edge, then the car's systems will help you. But if you're deliberately trying to skid it, you're in for a hard time because the diff stays very open until the last moment when it locks. See, look, super safe, super safe. If I drive like a normal human being, everything's absolutely fine. And the systems want to help me. It's when I'm trying to be a bit greedy 
and trying to get the car to do a little skid that it all goes wrong like I said it's like the variable lock diff it feels like it's just completely open until you've got the thing sliding and then both wheels are sliding and slipping and spinning on the traction which to be fair is like trying to drift an open an open uh, diff car which you don't generally speaking unless you're an absolute mental case this is all looking pretty cool though did not need to use the racing line there that was silly of me I mean the brake pedal the brake pedal's good the steering mm, it's good for an electrically steered car let's let's put it that way it's great for an electrically steered car the weight balance of the car is superb and compared to the six cylinder this is the biggest advantage that the four cylinder has is it is much lighter we're talking on the corner ways i've measured one of these at 1410 kilos with fuel in it so for a modern car that's super light the other thing is the balance front to back left to right diagonal cross cross balance this thing is a beast uh 51 over the front axle 49% over the rear axle. So that's MX-5 GT86 levels of balance and poise. And super torquey 400 newton meter two liter turbo with some kind of LSD. I mean, this LSD that's in it is probably, you know, easily good enough for your standard sub eight ring tool. Um, but I suspect if I was gonna build, if I was gonna go straight out and build like an N24 VLN car, and put it in class VT2. I'd be straight on the phone to limited slip.de, uh, try and get a Drexler built up. I think that would be the way you'd do this. Way. <laughs> the track is just in its most dangerous, where it's just a little bit damp. It's not actually raining, so you've got some dry lines available. Well, drier lines. Right, I'm a bit disappointed about adding our forced. So let's just have a little feel in the, sp in the spirit of scientific inquiry. Okay, so it's like the diff wants to be locked after you've started a slide and it stays, it stays locked. Interesting. All right. I understand that drifting is not allowed at the Nürburgring. And I'm just telling you now, that wasn't a drift, that was me experimenting to find out what the LSD is actually doing in this car. And if you don't know what you're doing when you're driving cars, you shouldn't be learning that kind of stuff on the Nordschleife. The Nordschleife is not the place to learn car dynamics or car handling. You need to have that stuff down pat before you come to the Nordschleife. The Nordschleife just does not have any time for that. He ain't got no time for that. Nice big wide lines. Can't quite decide what the conditions are here. I see some little dry bits every now and again. So let's talk about tires, because you may have noticed that we're breezing past everybody here in the wet. And that's largely because we've got Michelin Pilot Super Sports as the standard tire on this. And they're huge. Um, because this chassis and this bodywork and these wheels and these brakes are all ready for a 380 horsepower six cylinder car, that means that you've got all this space and they just massively over tire this car. Which is great news if you're going to make one into a track day car because you can get some seriously big rubber under there. So, standard tyres on the back of this, I believe, are 275s. And on the front, it's either 245s or 255s. And that's a lot of rubber for a 1.4 tonne car. Uh, I've been doing my homework because I'm in the process of building one uh, for an unnamed client that rhymes with tent for sting. And what's happening is I've spoken to Speed Engineering and Zocchi, and he's already got one of these as well. And he's working on all kinds of cool stuff. He's measuring exhaust gas temperatures, etc. 
um, but he's already done a nice set of wheels with ProTrack and he's figured out a lovely fitment and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going 18 by 10 all around with 265s square setup I've driven Zocchi's car already on the ring in the drive and it worked really really well he had it on the Yokohama Aero 52s and he had some slightly stiffer springs in it but stock dampers which are obviously like you know multi-matic style variable rate don't know who makes them but uh, they are a variable rate damper I control them with sports button and as you can imagine we're then looking at a 268 horsepower car stripping it out beautiful seating position beautiful weight balance beautiful dynamics and a really great square setup 265s all around I mean this car has got so much potential I was disappointed to learn that the six cylinders get in the manual gearbox and this isn't because I think if I was if I was buying for myself I would totally have a manual gearbox four cylinder with the performance pack I wouldn't bother with the six cylinder unless I just really really wanted the lap time because the six cylinder you put a lot of weight out front it's like the BMWs as soon as you put the six cylinder in it becomes a different car and you end up doing a lot of work to try and adjust the car when they're running four cylinders BMWs have that beautiful GT86 MX-5 feel and I think the Toyota because of that weight balance the four cylinder is actually my, pre my preferred Toyota Supra for track work and that's not about lap time that's not about having the fastest car on the track day that's just what car is going to make me feel fun and feel fizzy whatever the weather dry or wet and i think the four cylinders got it for me that is a cool car man i can't wait to get stuck into this we're going to be doing olins we're going to be doing big semi slicks we're going to do 265s etc etc whoa look at that viper gts i'm going to be I'm going to park next to him. Man, that is a cool car. Right, dudes, you know what to do. If you like these videos, you'll be pressing the follow, the like, the notification, the ring the bell, all of that stuff, yeah? Good, good. Catch you in another video. Yeah. <laughs>